All right. So now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Tony and Kim Oxidine. Um, first of all, this was scheduled for last month and uh, Tony had an emergency. So we're so thrilled, Tony, that you are back feeling better and we're able to reschedule because I know with your busy schedule, that's a tough thing to do. Um, most of us know Tony's long, long list of credentials, but among other things, he is a former chairman of Caller Lab and has been part of their executive committee for many years. Um, he is the owner of Royal Records. And I know besides being an owner of Royal Records, you've recorded on many, many other um, avenues of, uh, through other studios and companies. And in 2000, I believe you were um, given the prestigious honor of the Caller Lab milestone. So, you know, well versed in all of the things that calling and square dancing is all about. And I know um, your beautiful wife, Kim, is involved with you with GSI and many of the other things that you do there. I know you're there at Pride Resort. So it is a real honor to have you as our speaker today. And you're going to tell us about um, GSI. What is Grand Square International? The kind of projects you do? Um, a little bit about it. And of course, as we see on the screen, the GSI Caller School. For those of you that are listening, um, it, again, if you'll have the chat so that if you have questions during the program, you can type them in and we'll get present them to Tony and Kim towards the end. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tony and Kim Oxidine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm just kind of the mouthpiece. Kim is, is really the 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 work behind the, the organization, just so we get that straight. She, but I, she's not in the public eye. She doesn't like being in the public eye and I thrive in it. So that's the way we go. Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you about GSI. Um, we found over the years that, that people call us many things. We, we originally Grand Square Incorporated and to a lot of people we've become just Grand Squares and to others we become Grand Square International and to others we become GSI. And to others, we're GSI International. All of those are true. Um, it started out as Grand Square Incorporated, and that we're still incorporated as Grand Square Incorporated. Uh, however, if you go to our website, you'll see that our website is gsiinternational.org uh, because we, what started out as a little thing in North Carolina has branched out to where we have, we have representatives now virtually all over the world. Um, and I need to take my pictures out of here, there. Um, you can read this. I don't want to read to you, but but um, GSI is a is a a, a nonprofit, a 501 c three, and I think uh, Jim and and these guys can vouch that that five hundred one c threes are really hard to get, and uh, so we're we're real proud that we have that. There are very few five hundred one c threes in square dancing. There are, but there are very few of them. Uh, our mission statement is as follows: GSI wants to enhance the general public's perception of square dancing. And we want to keep the square dance and general public informed of all newsworthy dance issues and events. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on in what we do. To promote the health benefits of square dancing to both the general public and to the square dance population. And to be a communication vehicle for all square dancers and to increase the popularity of square dancing worldwide. Which is a very big mission statement. A lot of mission statements are just one sentence. Uh, but we try to, we're trying to, do, to wear many hats. In a nutshell, this thing was started in 1997 uh, with uh, Kim and her, her mom and dad. Her mom and dad works at, at, at our campground right now. And her mom and dad may be here before this thing ends. So when, if they do, we'll bring them in, you get to meet them. Uh, Everett and Virginia started dancing first and uh, they, they convinced Kim to start dancing. Uh, back in 1998, I guess it was, uh, there was a group of us uh, doing a big cruise, and we were riding in Randy Darty's bus. There was me, there was about eight of us, and we did a, a nationwide tour. We stopped and did dances everywhere, and we convinced these guys in Charlotte to put on a dance for us, and uh, we had about 40 squares at that very first dance, and that got them to the idea of they wanted to start doing things for square dancing when they saw that, that they could bring a crowd like that into Charlotte. Um, so, We'll talk first about Everett, Virginia, and should have a picture of them. Uh, Everett is 80, 86, Virginia is 83. 
Uh, they own a construction company in Charlotte, a, commer a commercial construction company uh, that's celebrating their 50 years this next year. They'll be in, been in business for 50 years. Everett still goes to the office every day. Uh, very seldom misses a day at all. Um, Virginia comes in. It, it's, a, it's a really a, a, a family business. Uh, Virginia has an office. Kim is there. She has an office. I'm there. I have an office. Their son, Barry, is there. He has an office. It's really a, a, a family kind of operation. We even have a kitchen. We eat most of our meals there at night. Most of our suppers are at night. And this is my darling bride. This is for my honeymoon, I think. This may have been for my honeymoon, but this is this is my darling, my darling bride. We've been together now for a bunch of years. We've been married since uh, been married now five years, and uh, happily for three. No, <laughs> no, we we get along we get along fabulously. We do. Um, let's see. To start with, yes, I wanted to get involved in 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 square dance promotion. So to that vein, they they started a they bought a large blocks of, of radio advertisement. Just to promote square dancing, one of them, uh, uh, they had a, one of the, the local DJ, uh, the guy that did the, the announcements for the Wolfpack, the North Carolina Wolfpack football team, uh, was, the, was the DJ. He, he did all the speaking, trying to promote local dances in the area. In addition, uh, GSI decided they wanted, to put, wanted to decide to put on a dance. And so they, they bought portable flooring, about 100 squares worth, and they started a dance called the Queen City Ball, which was... Uh, Oh, upwards at its peak was probably 12 or 1500 dancers. And in addition to that, you fed them all barbecue, if I remember right. Uh, we, still have, we still have the floor. Uh, part of it is, is at our campground now, but we still do still have part of the floor. Uh, their big thing when they decided to get involved, uh, about the time in 1999, there was a big, big push from the Call to Lab Foundation. You guys are around, been around that long. Uh, we did a... Uh, a tune called God Bless the USA, which raised money. Uh, the Curleys, uh, through GSI, donated $10,000 to, to Call a Lab to establish a scholarship fund. And at that time, it was the largest single donation that Call a Lab had received at that time. For that, uh, they were one of the first, or may have been the very first recipient of the Call a Lab Foundation Director's Award. If they weren't the first, they were, they were one of the first. Uh, for many years, Ever and Virginia and, and Kim uh, all came to the Call Lab Convention. Uh, Ever and Virginia haven't been in a while. Kim has been going with me. This is our, our plaque that we keep prominently displayed in our office. So that was in 2001. And notice they called us Grand Square Inc. And uh, it's another shot of it. This, this is the, uh, the Foundation Director's Award that we received in 2002. Uh, so the, the Curley family and GSI have been big supporters of Call to Lab and the foundation uh, since the early 2000s. Somehow, somebody convinced Kim that they needed to start a magazine. I'm not sure what, exactly what happened. And I wound up being the editor of that thing. And we started a magazine, we called it Square Dancing Today. At that time, there were two national magazines, uh, American Square Dance and Sets in Order. Uh, and they were both, uh, they were small, they weren't the, the regular size magazine. So this was actually the first full size magazine. It was full color. Uh, it was originally distributed uh, free. And often when we started delivering it, uh, distributing it free, we quickly wound up with better than 25,000 subscribers. This was our first issue. Uh, we published this uh, shortly after 9-11. Uh, and so we featured, we, we made this our, our inaugural issue. We made it, uh, as a tribute to the 9-11, uh, the people that passed away in 9-11. So we listed all of the, the people that passed away because of 9-11 in that tragic accident. Uh, all, of the, all of the people are listed in that. That was our very, that was our very first one. Um, this one was, uh, was, was, I guess this is our second. This is John Love, who is a, a local uh, country western singer, kind of took up with us. And uh, I guess he's not singing anymore, but he would raising kids now. And then we have a home holidays. Uh, we published it quarterly. Our, our big whoop to do was we we got an interview with Dolly Parton, which we thought was really, really great. And so we, she was featured in one of our issues. Um, we published it quarterly. And uh, <coughs> that's it. So here's a brief history of what went on with, with uh, GSI. After getting established in 1999, 
Um, in 2003, uh, the, the NSDC asked us to, to participate in passing of the torch at the Oklahoma City Convention. So we were very honored to do that, which that the passing of the torch is when, when uh, the next year's convention uh, receives the torch, kind of like the Olympic torch. Uh, it's, it's the end of one convention and the start of another. Um, at the same time, in around 2004, uh, we did, a, in some of the Charlotte schools, we did a seven week uh, introduction to square dancing that I did actually. So I would go to the schools, uh, one class once a week. And we did that for seven weeks, uh, just to kind of get, get kids interested in it and see if we could help the local classes. We weren't doing any classes at the time. So we were directing everybody, the kids and their parents to the classes in the area. What we did try one time was a new concept dance. And th what that new concept dance was, was we got people that had never danced uh, along with dancers. And we put a weekend on in Las Vegas. Part of the weekend was developed to regular score dancing. The other part of the, the weekend was developed to working with, with uh, brand new dancers and integrating all of them together at different points. So there was a lot for, for the callers, there was a lot of work. We worked pretty much uh, 12 hour days to get people through everything. Uh, for the dancers, not so much. There was there were sessions for the brand new people, sessions for the, for the normal square dancers. And like I say, then we got everybody together at the end. Uh, it went really well. I guess we had guys, we had guys fly over from, from everywhere. We probably had, I don't know, maybe 100 people, 125 people. So we thought it was very good. Um, in addition, uh, Everett Curley is very involved locally uh, in, in the Charlotte area. And, and so he's very well, uh, very familiar and, and friends with quite a few of the local politicians. So we get invited a lot of times to, to speak and do demos at some of the political fundraisers. Um, so we did that. We had barbecues. Uh, we did a, a citywide barbecue once that and we had uh, all the business leaders from the area. We had a, a famous comedian come in, what's her name? Je Jess June, uh, who was uh, at that time had been on HBO and several TV shows. Uh, so it was really, really well attended. Colder, God, it was so cold. I remember that it was in November and it was so cold. Um, later on, in the mid 2000s, the late 2000s, we established a sport dance fund in Florida to be used to strictly for recruiting and retention of new dancers. Uh, and that was, oh, I, I think 2005, 2006. Uh, right about the time, one of our things that we're most proud of is, is when Katrina devastated Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. Uh, we were sitting around and, and Kim came up, she said, you know, we should do something. And I came up with the idea. I said, "Well, let's let's do a let's do a 30-day fundraising drive and, and see what we can do." And so through the internet, and that time the internet was new. This is this is in uh, 2006, and so the internet is not nearly as big as it is now. Most people are on dial-up, and most people had AOL addresses. Um, but you, amazingly, you, we were just absolutely befuddled. Uh, in in 30 days, Squirt Answers worldwide donated more than $125,000. Now we had all this money and couldn't figure out what to do with it. And everybody said, well, I'll go to the Red Cross, do this and that. And I said, well, you know, I, we want to be sure the dancers are giving this money to help the Katrina people. So we want to be sure that the money goes, stays in Louisiana. So uh, we found a company called TRAC, which is however you pronounce that, Terrebonne, Terrebonne Readiness Assistant Coalition, uh, which is a religious organization actually, it deals with a lot of churches. They're, they're locally uh, in Louisiana. We work with those people. And um, this, this will tell you a little bit about track. You can, I'll leave this up here so you can, if you guys want to see what it's about, uh, this is the website for them. Uh, they're a great organization, this track company. They're, they work uh, real closely with MIT, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, in working with MIT, MIT had designed a, a hurricane resistant home. And the Square Dancers donated enough money that we were able to, to build five homes. So Square Dancers alone built five complete homes down in the bayous of, of Louisiana somewhere through TRAC and through uh, uh, MIT. Uh, this is the, um, this, this, was, this was the picture of the, of the homes. You see right here, I guess you can see my mouse. This is the way the homes look, they were on stilts. Uh, and they were, designed, they were designed to be hurricane resistant. You can find all of this on the track website, uh, which was on that page before. 
Uh, and, and I'm, I think we're recording this, you'll be able to pull it up. Uh, let's see. So, and here is the check that we presented to track along with our, with the square dancing today was our, our uh, we did a wrap up of it. Uh, so we presented a check for 125,000 and change. I'm not, can't see how, I'm not sure to let me bring it up bigger, but it's 125,000 and change that we presented to them. And we did that in 30 days. Oh, here it is. So this was 113,000. We had sent, we had sent already sent, I think 20. Payment ahead. Yeah, we sent one payment ahead. So we sent uh, 12 or $13,000 ahead. Then this was what we gave the rest of it to track. Uh, so every penny that came in went where we said it was going to go. And it all stayed down. Oh, no, we bought, we bought the, uh, uh, the, the building supplies. That's what we did. The additional money was, was buying building supplies. So all of it went down to Louisiana like we said it would be. Okay. Uh, at that time, uh, we decided, Kim actually came up with the idea of, of let's branch out. We, and I'd been traveling, me and Jerry Story, uh, my good buddy at the time, still, uh, we lost him a couple of years ago, but we, we'd been traveling Germany. So we, we'd met quite a few square dancers all over Europe. And uh, so we decided, Kim decided, well, let's do something. Let's branch out. We've been doing this big dance in, in Charlotte. Let's branch out and do something in, in Europe. Well, we decided to do a, a big dance, a big square dance. In addition to that, they started asking us, these guys over there said, listen, you know, we'd love to have a college school over here. So we decided to have a college school. So we, our first uh, world square dance was in Dachau, Germany. And we had about 100 squares, about 800, 900 people. And I think we had about 100 callers in our caller school. Uh, it was staffed by, oh dear, there was probably, let's see, there was me, Jerry Story, Paul Bristow, John Jones, Deborah Carroll Jones, Vernon Jones, Kenny Reese. Uh, there, were, there were eight or nine uh, callers from the states that GSI took over uh, and paid to come over and, and do, the, do the school. It was, a, well, it was a great school, really great. Uh, it was the very first one since that time, GSI has had a, has had a caller school somewhere in Europe every year, uh, sometimes multiple schools. Um, we also have a, a new uh, branch of GSI in Europe. It's called GSI-Europe. Uh, you can find that on the web, on the internet as well. Uh, we now have team leaders in 10 countries, and I will try to name those countries, and I'm sure I forget them, but I will try. We have Taiwan. We have Japan. We have Canada. We have Czechoslovak Czech Republic. We have Germany. We have England. We have Denmark, Sweden. Slovakia and Norway, I think, are the ten in uh, in Europe and around around Europe and around the world. And this is a picture. This is a picture of the first convention uh, in Dachau. Uh, that's uh, that's me. This is Jerry. I think that's Kenny Reese right there. Here's Vernon Jones. Uh, we all have our, our matching GSI shirts. <laughs> but this was beautiful, beautiful hall. It was in the middle of July. And it was about 100 degrees, and it was about 150 degrees inside. It was so hot. Here's a picture of the staff, some of the staff. This is uh, Jerry Story, Paul Bristow. That's me. Oh, dear. And these are three European coaches. I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> I shouldn't know. All right. Almer Numbers. Um, in 2011 uh, is when the tsunami uh, hit Japan. Incidentally, when we did our, our Katrina fundraiser, the very first check we got was from the um, Japanese Dancer Association for $5,000. They're one of the major donors. Uh, and, and they were the very first check that we got. When we saw this, and, and by this time, Kim had been to Japan several times. I've, I've been going to Japan at least once a year since the early 80s. So we have a lot of very close friends in Japan. And, and very good friends close to where the tsunami hit. And we saw the devastation there. So um, we worked with the J Japanese Square Dance Association. Again, we started a fundraising drive in the States and very quickly we raised $60,000. We sent that $60,000 to the Japanese Square Dance Association and they, paid, they used that money to go to dancers. All that money went to square dancers who were affected. 
Uh, so this time it wasn't just regular people. This, this was dancers that were regular, that were devastated by the tsunami. Uh, they were received this money. And you can find out all about that. Again, here's the website for it. It'll tell you all about it. Uh, the Japanese dancers are just wonderful. And the JSDA is, is just a great organization. It's a wonderful organization. All right, going on to 2007. Um, in 2007, the National Convention was in our hometown of Charlotte, Kim's hometown of Charlotte at the time. Uh, and uh, the chairman and the vice chairman were very good friends of mine. And, and uh, in talking to them, I convinced them that it'd be a good idea for us to have a caller school in conjunction with the nationals. And if, if the National Convention was, were to supply us the rooms, then GSI would supply, we'd take care of the color coaches and we'd run the, the color school. And uh, the Bowmans and, um, and the triplets uh, were just amazing. They jumped all over it. We were at the Weston Hotel, a beautiful hotel. And our very first color school in, for the Nationals, uh, I guess we had probably 50 or 60 uh, callers there. It was absolutely free. The only requirement was, and it's still a requirement, is that you must be registered for the convention. All the entire staff, all of the caller coaches, and everybody that attends the, the school must be registered for the convention. Since that time, uh, we've had a, a the, the NSDC has worked with GSI, and we've had a caller school every convention since then. My best guess, we've done, we've had over 600 callers uh, come to the caller schools. Uh, we've had as many as 83 callers uh, at one time, which was Atlanta. That was our biggest. We ran five rooms, and uh, it, it was just great. This year, we this year in Evansville, we had almost 50, and we ran four rooms. Um, this led GSI to believe to, to come to the conclusion that you know maybe maybe that we should work on on caller education, and it's our belief that, that uh, in order to get new dancers, you need new callers. And if you're gonna get new callers, we need not only new callers, but we need good new callers. We need callers that know what they're doing. So it, like it's printed here, it's, it's our belief that caller education is a major key to, to the success of square dancing. We still believe that. Uh, we're still actively involved very deeply in caller education. Um, if you look around now, some of the, there, there are only, I think, if my memory serves me correct, there are 39, accredited caller coaches in the world. Of those 39, I can think of six very quickly. And of those 39, there's probably only about 20 that are 25 maybe that are really active. Uh, and of those 25, I can, I think maybe six or seven cut their teeth on the GSI schools and, and they still do the GSI school. So we're very, very proud that, that we, we were able to get new caller coaches in as well. Oh, I got a listing of them. I forgot about this. So here are the guys that have gone through the GSI Caller School. Jack Flatties, Barry Johnson, Ted Lazat, Bob Riggs, Walt Burr, Bear Miller. Uh, those guys, have all, they all started with the GSI School. Um, you know, this year we had 12 callers on the staff, which is our biggest, our biggest kind of, now, because we, I make a big deal and, and I encourage new caller coaches. So we had, in addition to the five accredited caller coaches we had, we had seven aspiring caller coaches. Uh, and when these guys come to the school, uh, I work them. They, they have to give presentations. They, they speak to the callers. And uh, so we're trying, we're trying to get new caller coaches in. This is a picture of the, of the school this year. I'm sure, I think that, I'm not sure who that is. That may be, that may be I'm not sure. It could be Miss Salstrom, but I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. But this is the size crowd we had. There's Bear. There's Dee Dee Darty. She was one of the coaches. Uh, let's see if I can see the people. There's Jeremy Butler. He was a coach. There's Barry Johnson. He was a coach. There's Jack and Sherry Plattish. Tom Miller was a coach. Here's Jack Plattish back there in the patch. There's Mike Seastrom. There's Scott Bennett, Dan Salstrom, Vernon Jones. There's Ted and Shelley Lazat. Like I said, Dee Dee. Uh, here's Shauna Carey. Yes. If you go all the way down to the other end of that aisle, you'll see me and Sandy. Well, oh, shucks. What'd you make me do? Hang on. I got to get there. Where? I can't remember. Um, all the way in front, in the front row, right behind the guy in the front row. Up, 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 right there. Um, just to the right of where your arrow is. To the right. Right there. Yeah, you, you got your arrow on Sandy's head. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. 
So anyway, so, so this was a, if you ever need somebody to sing praises about caller school, you know we've been there several times. <laughs> it's a great thing, guys. Oh, this is Scott. I didn't recognize your voice. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, yeah, Scott. Scott has been to several GSI schools. Uh, you'd be amazed. Uh, let's see this. Uh, let's see this lady right here. I'm not going to mention names. Uh, she's she's a wonderful. I just did her 83rd birthday party last year. Uh, she's been to probably a half dozen GSI schools. Um, I'm trying to see if George, where is George? George has been to about every one. Uh, we have one or two people that have been to every school that we've had. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're very proud. We're very proud of the school. That's, that's kind of our crown jewel each year. Let's see. Uh, and now we have this year, um, or actually last year, with just a bunch of help from a lot of friends, uh, we now have a new website. And the website is GSI Caller School. On this website, uh, you can find the syllabus. You can find, I think it's probably the most comprehensive caller education website out there. I invite everybody to go look at it. Uh, there's a complete syllabus on there. Uh, there's a link to the uh, class sex sessions, the Zoom sessions that uh, Ted Lazant and I and Jack Plattish and a bunch of us did a couple of years ago when, when COVID was so bad, but it's just a wonderful website. Please go visit it. It's www.gsicallerschool.com. Um, here's some of the stuff on there. We have 40 videos from the class series. Uh, we have the online syllabus, uh, links to how to, how to use some of the uh, call of that, or some of the uh, software that we have, the choreography software. Uh, we try to keep links to all of the future square dance conventions because uh, I am of the belief, and, and Kim and I both are of the belief that, that the National Square Dance Convention is our crown jewel. So we want to do everything we can to try to help the National Convention. And, and we attended, I missed this year, but uh, this year I've been to every, square dance, every National Square Dance Convention since 1975, except for four. So we try to go to all of them. Let's see. And uh, we've already got the college school lined up next year in Mobile, Alabama. It's going to be at the Holiday Inn in Mobile. It's a great facility. And, uh, the, and incidentally, the, the facility they have for the convention there is amazing. It's a beautiful facility. Everything under one roof. Uh, you don't leave. You don't go anywhere. Everything's right there. Uh, they're going to have custom sound. We've used the sound. We, in fact, we tested the sound a couple of months ago, and the sound is going to be fantastic. I think everybody's going to have a good time there. Uh, these guys are working really, really hard for the convention. And that's pretty much what I have. Unless Kim has something. I'm sure she doesn't. So now I would entertain, if you have questions, I will entertain questions, and, and Kim or I or both of us will try to answer them. But that's what I have. Thanks for listening to me. Well, and I'm thank you, Tony and, and Kim. And, and I'll personally say I didn't realize Kim and her family were so heavily involved in the founding. And so thank you for that. I think it's a wonderful organization. And I sure learned a lot more about what is involved with GSI. So um, thank you, Tony, for that. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have anything in the chat. It's gonna make things easy for me. I can, I can, I can start, I can start on my score, a seafood boil. <laughs> y'all are welcome. We're all to, invited, welcome right? To, you you want to come down? You're welcome to. Yeah, we'll, we're gonna eat about six. Got about <laughs> three and a half hours. You want to come down? You can get here in time. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a trek for me. Um, does anybody have any questions for Tony and Kim? That was easy. Well, it was. Um, Tony, one of my questions is, what is the process for becoming a certified caller coach? I mean, is it it's, it's through GSI? No, no, no. It's through Caller Lab. The, the Caller right. the, the, the Caller Co accredited Caller Coaches is, is a Caller Lab committee. Uh, it's quite an involved process. It's probably uh, it's it's the it's the exclusive most exclusive group in Caller Lab because it's the hardest one to get. Uh, you have to accumulate a certain, you have to do a bunch of hours and, and certify your hours that you're teaching. Uh, once you certify that, you have to take two written tests and then you have to take an oral exam. Uh, I've, we, in fact, I just did one, I just administered one and it was almost four hours. 
Uh, it, it's really it's really involved. Uh, you have to you have to design your own syllabus. Uh, you've got to it, it's it, there's there's a reason there's only 37 accredited color coaches in the world. It's it's really really hard, and, and those of us that have it are really really proud of that certification. So if you go to, if any caller if you're a caller and you go to a caller school, uh, be sure. Or, or if, if you see a guy with that ACC by his name, then then you know that you're pretty sure that, that this this person knows what they're doing because you don't you don't get it easily. Most people that test for it fail. Probably 75 percent of the people that test fail initially. Most of them retest and 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 half of them pass the second time. Yeah. So it's it's really it's 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 tough. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm thinking that, you know, most areas across the country are like we are out here on the West Coast, which is we're losing callers as fast as we're losing dancers. And so encouraging, you know, people that are interested in calling or have been started calling um, to attend these caller schools, whether it's a certified caller clinic or school like GSI puts on, or I know like with our state convention, we're doing just a call, we're calling it a caller clinic um, because we don't have the accredited caller coaches, but we still have well-known international callers doing those trainings for us and giving callers and encouraging aspiring callers to attend these workshops is really important so that they can get and build their confidence um, because we, we do need callers. Yeah, yeah. Well, God, we, we, we do so bad. At, but not we only not need call we need good callers yes uh you, you know because a bad caller and i use that word bad in quotes but a bad caller can run off as many people as you can bring in Absolutely. so especially especially when you're talking about new dancers we need we need guys that that know know the vocabulary and can do it uh you know there there are really good callers there are guys there are really really good callers that can't teach a lick there are, there are callers that can teach really, really good, can't call a lick. Mm -hmm. There are callers that can teach other callers and can't call. They, they, can, they can tell you how to do it and they can't do it. So, you know, so find, find somebody. There's very few guys that, that there's very few callers that, that do it all. Uh, right. and, and so when, when you got to say, if you, if you, go, if you go somewhere at that, that, if you see a caller lab, accredited caller coach, there's a standard there. So I, I recommend that. But even if there's not a caller coach, uh, please uh, attend seminars and clinics, but no matter who's doing it, because I can learn from the most novice dancer. And, and I use this example in caller schools all the time. My teach, uh, one, of the, one of the things we usually give callers in the, in the schools is we say, okay, here's the call, teach it. And, and they have to show it. So I can tell you now that one of the ways, the way that I teach Dixie style to this day, I stole from a brand spanking new, at that time, she was a brand spanking new caller uh, that had, hadn't been calling maybe a year. I doubt that she had ever taught Dixie style. Mm -hmm. I don't think she'd ever taught a class. Um, and, I, and, and it was the best teach I've ever seen. I stole it then, and that's been, forever ago i've used it ever since so you can learn from anybody um that's okay. the cool thing. tony we do have a question how do you recertify if you're a certified caller coach do you go through recertification and how is that done if you're an accredited caller coach and you lose your accreditation you have to retest okay if you, now you're able you're able to each year in fact i just had to do it you're able to uh every five years we have to Research, research, we apply again, and and there you you have to show that you have taught X number of hours, and and then when you do that it's you know it's you, you get re recertified for lack of a better word, but if you lose it for whatever reason, then the process says you've got to go you got to start back over again and you have to retest written and oral test. Yeah, and you know, I don't, I don't know of anybody that's that's lost it that's trying to get back uh, there may be somebody, somebody has a question I don't, I don't know of anybody that's that's been there yeah and we have we have a situation that that there are callers that, that aren't actively teaching anymore and we have a a, a caller coach emeritus program for those guys 
uh, they can keep their, they, they become a caller coach emeritus saying they're not as active as they once were. Yeah. You know. And, you know, one of the things that I can encourage everyone is, you know, even if your local caller doesn't have access to, um, you know, the certified caller, I mean, I know you can do a lot of online stuff and, and encourage them to use all of those resources. Um, but when you have a caller that is not great, they're still learning, or even if they've been calling for a while, um, you know, we have a caller for my advanced club who basically took on teaching advanced because he knew we were desperate for a caller. And so, you know, and he struggled because he had some mentoring years and years ago that told him that he always had to cite call. He couldn't read off notes. He couldn't, you know, and, and he had struggled with us. And so as a board, we went back and we said, look, you know, we want you to try some of these other things. We don't care if you read your, your cards, if it helps you get through the sequence or helps us, if we make the mistake, we can recreate it. Do whatever you can. And we were lucky enough that we had a caller lab member who moved into our area, joined our club, and he is a very proficient advanced and challenged caller. He's been mentoring our caller and we have seen a world of difference in the last month in what he's done. But because someone else said it's okay to read your cards, to do this, to do that, whatever it takes, we are so desperate for callers. Whatever you can do as a club member, as another caller to mentor someone else, just because they're not the best doesn't mean they don't have potential to learn and we need right. to encourage that you are you are so right you know, the the uh, trend here for the last in the last oh maybe decade uh eight, eight or ten years has been getting away from so much site calling uh now most not all not all but most uh let me see a lot of the color coaches i can tell you that all the color coaches associated with gsi the accredited color coaches the group that you saw. Most of us um, stress modular calling over site. Uh, and, and it's very technical terms and nobody y'all don't need to know, understand much of it. Uh, the, the, best, the best way to call is a combination of everything. For many years, we taught, you got to learn to site call and that's the only way you do. And, and so then callers spent so much time, they spent so much time trying to resolve the set that they, they forgot how to call. So now the trend now is, is we work more with more relationship calling than, than site calling. Uh, and chances are, I can give an example, any given dance I do, uh, shy of advanced, uh, and I gotta admit, uh, advanced I cite mostly, but shy of advanced, probably 50% of my dance is memorized, is in my head, is modular. And, and the thing is, is, is that, and I think Scott will back me up on this, the dancers don't know. You know, and, and you, if, you go, if you go to a dance, if you go to, a, if you go to a, a pick somebody, if you go to a really, really good caller, the, the, really, the really, really good callers, the guys that, that, the guys that are household names, um, you'll find that, that all of their good stuff is memorized. You know, the good stuff is incited, the, the, like the, the strain, the, the do this once and a half and, and, and do it twice and the boys go again and, and boom, you're home. That's memorized. All of that good stuff is memorized. And, and there's been a trend, like say in the last 10 years, maybe a little bit less, to get away from so much side calling to where you're not 100% side calling. Now, the, 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 the more prominent callers now you'll find are probably calling uh 60% site maybe 70% site and 30% something else yeah uh, and and that and that percentage will change as they continue calling it will change i, I can guarantee you because like i say mine is probably at plus and below mine's probably 50-50 right now and but i don't think the dancers know you know i did a dance thursday night and nobody came up to me and said well tony did you memorize that sequence? You know, they didn't. I, so I don't, I don't think I don't think the dancers know. We callers worry about it, but the dancer dancers just want to be entertained. Right. And, well, and, and, and when they, we're they, in our weekly workshops, you know, our dancers have struggled, you know, after being 
not dancing for a year and a half, two years and trying to get back up to speed and all of that, we're messing up as much as the caller might have been. And yet when he was just strictly site calling, he could not put us back into the position that we messed up so that we could redo it. And so yes. by him, you know, writing out these scripts and stuff, you know, we can now say, look, we messed up, you know, walk us back through that exact same sequence so we can do it again. And yeah. so, I mean, you like know, I say, just. You know, you, you look at, if you look at, at challenge and above, uh, at advanced maybe, but especially challenge and above, everybody writes, mostly everybody writes, you know, so there's, there's no, there's no harm in writing. For many years, we, we, we call our coaches have, have shied away from telling people, right, we, we, we frowned on it. And that's no longer the case because now in order for me to memorize, in my case, for instance, for me to memorize something, if I'm going to, if I'm going to take a module and memorize it, I got to write it out first. I have to look at my, I have to use my checkers and I, and I, and then I do, I move, do the calls, then I write them down and then I memorize them from having written them down. Uh, so there, there's no, there's no shame in writing. Now yeah. you can't, you can't do a dance where you got the, the computer in front of your face this way. No. So there, there's a way to read and still maintain contact with the dancers, which the dancers want you to know that, that you at least care about them. If you're just doing nothing but looking at a screen, the dancers know that you don't really care. And so right. you've got to be able to form that bond with, with the dancers. And so that's, that's, why, that's why I say the best combination, the best way it's a combination of reading, sight, modules, is a combination of all of it. That, now that's what you find the really, really, really good callers. And my idea of a good caller it's probably different than somebody else. But the, in my mind, the really, really good callers, that's what they do. And in my, the, the pros that I work with, uh, um, okay, I can do this because he's not with us anymore. Uh, marginally, I think very few people would argue with me that Jerry's story was not the best caller that ever walked the face of the earth. There's a lot of people that think that. And, and, and I'm one of those. Uh, and it would it would surprise you to know that that Jerry's material was half memorized, as good as he was, as and this wild stuff that he had, all of that wild stuff was memorized, mm -hmm. and and I defy people to say that Jerry's story wasn't a good caller. Yeah. You know, well, and, arguably, and like arguably you say, the best. Like you say, you have to write it and script it out so that you know That's it works, and then you memorize it. All right, we do have another question that came in. Um, would NSDC Registered dancers be allowed to um, observe your GSI Encur callers. Encouraged. We we love we love dancers. Okay. Yes. That answers. Ab absolutely. All right. Any other questions that we have for Tony or Kim? Hey Tony, do you do you differentiate between site calling and resolution? Yes. It's two different things. I, I, you, when you some call some people talk. And I think most callers, when they talk site, they're talking about site resolution and not site calling. Yes, there there is a difference. And I suppose you want me to tell that difference. <laughs> no, I think you can be a site caller and have memorized resolutions from certain Absolutely. formations. Absolutely, and you and you can be and you can be a memorized caller. You can do a lot of memory with site resolutions. You know, and here again, the best the best thing is both. But I can tell you unequivocally that that. All of my good resolutions are memorized. You know, all of them are. Uh, I'm just not smart enough to cite some of that stuff that, that some other guys can possibly do. But yeah, there's a big difference between site calling and site, site resolution. Most yeah. callers come to a caller school wanting to learn to site resolve. They don't want to learn to site call. They want to learn to site resolve. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else you'd like to add, Tony? I'm talked out. <laughs> I'm going to run. See you in a couple of weeks, Tony. You bet, my friend. I'll see you in a week. In a week? That's right. Yeah. Thank, listen, oh. uh, thanks for having me. This was, this was so, I'm sorry, you know, we missed the first one. Um, but I'm glad to be on this one. This was this was a lot of fun, and, and well, I, hope, I hope everybody understands. You know, I have heard. Let me say this, and I want this to come out in the right way. 
I have heard callers say, and, and speaking of GSI, calling somebody going over to the dark side, because some, there's, there's callers that, that don't like what we do. There's callers that don't like that we do stuff for free. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and so sometimes, sometimes we get a bad rep. So it's, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to, to put everything out in the open so everybody can see exactly what we do. And, and, and the face behind you, when you talk GSI, right now, GSI is Kim. You know, that's, she, she's the president and the treasurer and the, you know, and, and I'm just kind of, I'm just married to her. And <laughs> I, just, I just do what she tells me. But, but, but we, we, try to do, we try to do good. We try to work with, with the, especially with the, the, the NSDC and the NEC, we try to work closer to these guys because we want to work on a, on, a, on a large scale. That's the only way you can be effective is work on a large scale. And so thanks for, for allowing us the opportunity to, to better explain what we do. Well, and, and I think it's really great. And I do appreciate you taking the time. And I know that Jet Roberts, when he was out here in California, was really how we got to know a little bit about GSI because he was a great ambassador. But it was always kind of this organization that I didn't know a whole lot about. So I certainly appreciate getting more of the background. And, and you know, I did learn a lot. And, and for those of you that are here, we will um, post Tony's um, PowerPoint presentation to the website, usda.org. Um, and the whole series is called Beyond the Dance Floor. So we'll get those up this weekend. And again, Tony, I can't thank you and Kim enough for all you've done for square dancing and for joining us today. And, and we really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank you guys very much. Thanks for joining us. And thank you all. Come see us at Pride. I'd love to. <laughs> I'll save my pennies. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Holy moly.